Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. In this video, I'll quickly show you how to overclock your controller on the PC. So the method I'm going to show you will mostly be applicable onto almost any controller. It's just that the fact is some controllers are more prone and more easy to overclock than the others. Some other controllers you might be able to overclock in the actual program, but at the same time, they will not be overclocked and will have the same delay and the same input lag. So just keep that in mind. But firstly, just go ahead and create a restore point so that you can bring back your system to its original state if anything goes sideways and wrong. Also keep in mind that we are not responsible for any damage you perform and deal on your system and computer. So go to the system restore, create a restore point, choose a C drive, then click on create, insert a name, create, and you're done and we can continue with our video. So this app is called HID USBF. You can download this by using the link in the video description. All right, so it's very straightforward and easy. You might be a little bit scared by the interface of this application, but it's really not that hard. So under the devices drop down, make sure to choose the all. And in here in this list, you need to just basically find your controller in the list. You might want to make the window bigger to see the entire description of all of the devices available. So in my case, I am using the DualShock 4 version 2 controller. So I'm basically going to search for it in the list. So basically what it is, is, is this one, wireless controller, headset, earphone, blah, 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 wireless controller. So this is going to be my DualShock 4 controller. In your case, depending on what kind of controller you're using, you'll have a different name here. For example, Xbox wireless controller or a DualSense or any maybe custom third party controller. Just make sure that you find the corresponding name in here in the list under child's name. And basically now what we're doing, the very important step is you will not have this filter on device. So just basically make sure to choose the rate, right? So this thousand, you're going to have more than me here, but you need to choose the thousand and just basically under selected rate in the drop down, make sure to choose a thousand, then install service. Then you click on, you wait for the service to be installed. This will, this will install the driver. Then you click on filter on device, and then you click restart. And after clicking restart, you might want to either reboot your computer or just basically unplug your controller from your USB hub and basically plug it back in and you will be done. So just make sure that you're doing it in the steps, just like I told you. So firstly, install service. After that, tick filter on device. And the third one, the last step, restart. And after that, your controller will be successfully overclocked. And if, for example, you're using DS4 Windows for your Sony controller, for example, the very easy method to check if your controller is overclocked is by choosing your profile, going to edit, controller readings, and as you can see, input delay in my case is less than 0.5 milliseconds, which is insanely low. This means that my controller is now overclocked and the standard non-overclocked delay for DualSense or DualShock controllers, and basically the reason Sony controllers is going to be 3.5 milliseconds. As you can see, I have way lower than that. I have three whole milliseconds lower of a delay. So my controller is indeed overclocked. So after doing that, just make sure that your input delay is the way it's supposed to be. And after that, just go ahead and play your games. Your controller will now feel more responsive and snappier and more comfortable to use. Thank you for watching, guys, this tutorial. Hopefully this helps. Leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, and I'll see you in the next one.